Today we're going to get into what printer you should pick if you're thinking about picking up a 3D printer today for 3D printing. And this is going to be based on a lot of factors. You're looking at price, you're looking at usability, you're using that ease of use. So these categories I want to say are broken down into the type of person you are in this 3D printing journey. So if you are a beginner starting out, you don't know anything about 3D printing aside from you want to get into it. That's one category. If you are the hobbyist, you know what you're doing, you have 3D printers, you've used them before, you may have one at home already, but you want to get something a little bit more robust or advanced, this is for you. And then we have the third category, prosumers, people who really are really, really deep in 3D printing already and want the best of the best for a home use. And they maybe want to expand their production or get into producing parts that category is really for you. Obviously, these categories are gonna go along with the price as well. So your beginner category is looking at the $500 or less rough price estimate. The consumer that is more of the hobbyist is going to be in the 1,000 or less price point. And then your advanced prosumer category are all 1,500 and up. So that kind of gives you a position of where you need to be if you're looking at these printers and what the pricing would be for you. Now, I do want to say I'm not going to speak about all the stats and points of these printers because I'm going to have that on the screen so you can visualize and kind of read that up as we're going along. But I'm going to give you my thoughts on these printers based on what I've researched or using them myself like I do here in the, in the shop. So with that said, let's jump right into the first category. So for beginner users, we're really targeting ease of use and low price of entry. Because of that, there are a myriad of options but only some that offer that ease of use point that I feel is really, really beneficial for a brand new user. And we're not gonna get into some of these other companies that gives you maybe economical printers, but without the ease of use, because that I really think is a key component to this category. Our first option in this category that I'm gonna recommend is the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. And by extension, the second one I'm gonna recommend is the Bamboo Lab A1. Both these printers are very robust printers and they have very, very good user interfaces. Because of that, I put them in this category as printers that I would recommend to someone starting out and that wants to figure out their first steps in 3D printing because the user interface is very, very good. They have a small build area in the A1 Mini and a standard 250 by 250 build area 254 to be exact by 254 build area in the a1 so neither of these are going to be a very small build area the a1 mini is a little bit more restrictive but if you're just starting out that might be okay and the pricing isn't too bad either the a1 mini currently on the u.s store is 249 if i'm not mistaken and the a1 is 399 now that is for the base unit without the ams and multi-material printers uh systems so you can add colors all that is you can buy that later this is just the printer's price i think both these are great options for people who are just starting out and want something that's easy to use and kind of walks you through everything my third option in this category is the elegu centauri carbon now this printer is surprising it is a core xy so slightly different kinematics compared to the first two and that has a lot of benefits for print speed and it's also an enclosed printer so that means that you can have some noise reduction there as well. And if you're printing with some materials that tend to warp or lift, that, ch that chamber, because it's enclosed, does retain heat a little bit better, meaning that you can print with these materials without the beds warping too easily. So you have some benefits there. And at $300, I feel like you get a lot for your money. And the build area is actually fairly good at 254 by 254, similar to the A1. So you're not losing any space. You're getting a closed printer, Core XY. So there aren't a lot of negatives here. The only thing is you're not going to be able to pick this up tomorrow. Uh, this printer is in pre-order status primarily, so you'll buy it today, but you won't receive it until July or maybe August, about two months after you purchase it. And that could be a deal breaker if you wanted to jump in right now and move quickly. But again, for $300, $299 US, you're getting a lot of printer. And I think the user interface is still fairly good. Maybe not Bamboo Lab levels, but still fairly good for what you're paying. Our next category is the hobbyist category. And we have three printers here as well. We have the Bamboo Lab P1S, we have the Prusa Core 1, and we have the Creality K1C. Now these printers are all very similar in the basic function. They are all Core XYs. They are all the same type of build area, approximately, Prusa being a little bit smaller. And they're all enclosed printers. So you're all very similar in that regard. Now some of the differences in this category is that the P1S actually has the worst interface out of this group compared to the first category where Bamboo Lab had the best interfaces. This interface on the P1S is a small screen. It is not touch screen. It is very hard to read, black and white. There's not a lot of benefits there. 
you're really getting a much better screen and much better user interface on the Core One and the K1C from Creality. Now, to be honest, I don't use that screen very often. I use the Handy app or whatever it's called from Bamboo Lab, which lets me remote into the printer through the app and send my prints or use Bamboo Studio on my PC. So I don't really get to interact with the screen too often, but to be honest, it is a crappy screen. So uh, I don't think that'll bother the hobbyist too much as long as you use the Bamboo Studio program to send your prints over. The Core One from Prusa is a little bit better as far as the screen on the machine is concerned. It does have some other negatives. It is a smaller build area. So that is something to keep in mind. You are losing a little bit of space there. And the other component that I don't like about the Prusa is the price. It is a very expensive printer, especially compared to the P1S from Bamboo Lab. Almost double the price if you want a fully assembled Prusa Core 1. That comes with some benefits. They do have some very good customer service and some very good technical knowledge. So if you get stuck and need someone to assist, you can reach out and they do have customer service that is very, very responsive. But you are paying for that nearly up front with almost the price of two P1Ss for the price of one core one from Prusa. So that might be a deal breaker if you're looking for something that is not that expensive because the Prusa Core 1 really is a pricey printer. The other thing that has been an issue for some that have been using it online that we've seen is what's called vertical artifacting. So the Prusa Core 1 does have these vertical artifacts which are these wavy patterns, these strange artifacts on the skin or on the surface of prints when you print, especially if you print tall. And that's because of the resonance in the belt. And it doesn't seem like Prusa has found a solution for this. So I would caveat that if you're printing a lot of things that are flat, completely flat on one side, and you want the surface finish to be very smooth, I would worry picking up a Prusa Core 1 because that is an issue that they have not resolved yet. And the last printer in this category, the Creality K1C. This printer, you know, has come a long way. It started with the K1 and the K1 had a myriad of problems. You name it, issues with the extruder, issues with the nozzle, it was it was a lot of issues. The team at Creality, honestly, I think has done a fairly good job in fixing a lot of those problems with the K1C that was released afterwards. So I would recommend this printer in this category if you're looking for something a little bit more economical and you're not afraid to tinker a little bit with your machine to get it to print the way you want because the Creality K1C may require more tinkering than the other options in this category. But that might be okay if you consider the fact that your pricing is significantly less. You're looking at 500, sometimes even 499 when it's on sale. So you can get some good prices here for a very, for the most part, competent machine. So something to keep in mind. And now we move on to the last category, the creme of the creme, the best of the best, the category of stuff that is just very expensive and very capable, but very expensive. So the first one in this category is the Prusa XL. Prusa XL is a very large printer, 360 by 360 by 360. We're talking massive build area. And it has the five tool head or multi tool head system. So you can have multiple tool heads on this machine for printing multiple colors or multiple materials, which is very unique and has a lot of benefits. That said, it does require a little bit of tinkering to get it to work the way you expect. And another issue is not an enclosed machine. So you're paying a lot. This machine can go from $2,000 roughly to almost $4,500 when fully assembled with five tool heads. And it's not an enclosed machine. So something to keep in mind. It's also very large, extremely large, I would say. So you're going to need to have somewhere you can set this down that you can then access it from every angle when you need to do things or modifications or maintenance. And that can be a tall order because it is a very large unit to set down somewhere. That's what she said. <laughs> the next printer is the Bamboo Lab H2D. And that printer, honestly, I think is the best one in this category. We use it all the time and it has been nothing but perfect. So you are getting a good machine there. It is 1,999 US currently on the US store and it is a two nozzle system. It promotes a 350 by 320 by 325 bed area, but that is not reality because the left nozzle can only print on the left side and the right nozzle can only print on the right side. There is a space where that nozzle cannot reach. So you don't get the full 350 at all times. You're really getting a little bit of a smaller area. That said though, you do get a lot of other great features. It is a heated chamber, which the Prusa XL does not have since it is an open printer, open frame. So in this regard, you can work with some more advanced engineering materials that require higher temperatures and you can actually achieve that because the printer itself can heat up the chamber to that temperature that's required and it actively vents out 
from the chamber if you're printing materials that don't require the heating to ensure that the temperature inside the chamber is where it needs to be for that material you're using. So all of this is done automatically, which is pretty amazing. User interface is fantastic. Bamboo Lab from the beginner category to the advanced category has a very robust user interface that is very user friendly. So I think you're not going to have any issues in that department. It does have access to the AMS2 Pro from Bamboo Lab for multi-material printing. And because you have two nozzles, there's a lot less waste if you're using two colors in your prints or two materials in your prints. I think you get a lot for the price here. I'm not even going to talk about the laser attachments and the cutting attachments because I feel like that is something I don't really want to get into in this video about 3D printers but you do get a lot for the machine that you're getting compared to Prusa XL, for example. Now, the third printer in this category is a Creality K2 Plus, and that is probably your budget-friendly option in this category. You're looking at a 350 by 350 by 350 build area in an enclosed printer, heated chamber. Uh, most of the benefits you're looking at with the H2D from Bamboo Lab, except it's only one nozzle instead of two, which means you can't do two materials without purge and waste, but that said, you're only looking at 1,499 US dollars, which is much less than the Bamboo Lab H2D alternative. Now, I would argue the Bamboo Lab H2D user interface is significantly better, and you're gonna get a lot more usability out of that. It is much more user-friendly than the K2 Plus offering, but if you don't mind tinkering a little bit, the K2 Plus does give you a fairly large build area for a much reduced price, almost 25% less than the Bamboo Lab H2D option. And that wraps up this video. I'm hoping this was useful to you, that this information has been beneficial. If there's anything I missed, if you're thinking about one printer that was just the best printer this year and you did not mention it, why didn't you mention it? Well, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Drop a like, drop a subscribe. It helps the channel out. And I hope to have more content for you next week. In the meantime, keep on printing and thank you for taking out the content. Take care and have a good one.